Cheap Trick got their start in Rockford, Illinois in 1973. The Rock Outfit's original lineup consisted of guitarist Rick Nelson, bassist Tom Peterson, drummer Bon E. Carlos, and lead vocalist Randy Zeno Hogan. As is fairly typical with a band that's been around for nearly half a century, Cheap Trick has gone through several different iterations over the last five decades. Today, their lineup consists of Nielsen, Peterson, and frontman Robin Zander. Four years after forming, they released their debut self-titled album in 1977. With the release of their second studio album, In Color, later that year, they found success in Japan. Two years later, they achieved mainstream success in the U.S. with the release of their third critically acclaimed album, Cheap Trick at Budokan. That year, the band reached the top 10 on the U.S. Billboard charts with the live version of their song, I Want You to Want Me. A little under a decade later, they topped the U.S. charts with their single, The Flame. They've sold more than 20 million albums and have played more than 5,000 shows. And in 2016, they were finally inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But there are plenty of details about their time in the spotlight that many of you may be unaware of. Hardship has routinely played an active role in their story. Join Facts First as we discuss several tragic details about the Cheap Trick band members. The Departure of Zeno Cheap Trick fans likely know very little about the band's original lead singer, Randy Zeno Hogan, considering the fact that for every single Cheap Trick album, the band's frontman has been Robin Zander. Fortunately, unlike groups like The Doors or Nirvana who lost their frontmen to death, Zeno voluntarily chose to leave Cheap Trick and is alive and well. By leaving the band so early on in their journey, he joined a small club of rockers that includes the likes of Dave Evans, the original singer of ACDC, who ditched their respective bands before they found commercial success. Since leaving Cheap Trick, Zeno has been a member of the Midwestern rock group Bad Boys, who released moderately successful tracks like Midnight Love and Private Party. Although Cheap Trick's success in America has never quite reached the same level as their success in Japan, the two bands are hardly comparable. That's why Zeno still lists Cheap Trick as a credit on his professional website half a century later. One might be tempted to criticize him for leaving a band that would eventually become world famous, but at the time, in 1973, Cheap Trick hadn't even released an album, and it didn't look like the group was going anywhere. During this early era, they were playing local shows in Wisconsin and Illinois, trying to cash in on the budding glam rock scene. After Zeno met Minnesota glam rock band Straight Up, they showed up one day in a white limo and offered him $250 a week to join their group. For the 21-year-old single guy in the early 70s, that was quite a bit of money. So he left Cheap Trick and joined Straight Up for some time before jumping ship once again to front Bad Boys. Soon after, Robin Zander was brought in as lead vocalist. Robin was an excellent replacement. While both rockers had long hair and a somewhat androgynous appearance, Robin was arguably far more attractive and had a strong singing voice. Xander has continued to be the front man of Cheap Trick ever since and most recently can be heard on the band's 20th studio album, In Another World, which was released in 2021. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Few original members remain. As of 2022, only three original members of Cheap Trick still tour and record with the band. Besides Zeno's early departure, Tom Peterson left the band in 1980. He was replaced by John Brandt, but in 87, Peterson returned to the group. Bun E. Carlos stopped touring with Cheap Trick in 2010. Rick Nielsen's son, Dax Nielsen, filled in with Carlos previously, so when he left the band, Dax became the full-time touring drummer. Carlos filed a lawsuit against the band in 2013, claiming they weren't letting him still function as a member. They settled the lawsuit, however, and Carlos still owns a quarter of the band's rights and is, technically speaking, still a member. Pete Cornita played bass and provided backing vocals from 1980 to 81. Magic Christian has played keys and provided backing vocals on and off with the band while on tour since 1982. Other touring musicians who have played with Cheap Trick over the years include Steve Walsh, Mark Raddus, Todd Howarth, and Hank Ransom. From bowling alleys to the airwaves. After forming in 1973, Cheap Trick started playing at small venues, bars, and bowling alleys in their hometown of Rockford, Illinois. When asked how the band developed their signature sound, Robin Zander has pointed to the fact that all four members of the original lineup came from distinct musical backgrounds. Drawing from diverse acts such as the Yardbirds to the Rolling Stones, Beatles, and the early punk scene, Cheap Trick carefully crafted their sound to create something unique. Peterson has been quoted as saying that what the band really delivers is what he calls heavy pop music. Producer Jack Douglas discovered the band while visiting a relative in Waukesha, Wisconsin. A buddy of his told 
told him he needed to come to the local bowling alley, Sunset Bowl, to hear a band that was playing. When Douglas arrived, he was blown away by what he was witnessing. Cheap Trick, ever since the get-go, liked to do things over the top. Even at that early bowling alley show, they pulled no punches. Douglas proceeded to call Epic Records head of A&R Tom Werman and insisted he had to see the band play. Douglas said if Werman didn't come out, he was going to take the group to RCA instead. So Werman made his way to Illinois and signed the band on the spot. By the time Cheap Trick began recording their debut album, they already had a boatload of experience, both performing live and writing their own material. Before they entered the studio, they had already penned three of their biggest hits, Surrender, Dream Police, and I Want You to Want Me. Oddly enough, not one of these songs was featured on their first self-titled album, which hit record stores in 1977. After touring Japan in 1978, Cheap Trick recorded two shows at the Nippon Budokan and took those tracks, compiled them, and released them as a live album called Cheap Trick at Budokan. That record ended up being their breakthrough, skyrocketing them to international fame. 20 studio and 8 live albums later, Cheap Trick is still going strong. Their most recent release, In Another World, was initially slated for release in late 2019, but was disrupted by COVID. The album was finally released in April of 2021, following the release of singles Light Up the Fire and Boys and Girls and Rock and Roll. In Another World documents the current socially and politically polarized era in a unique way. Xander has described the album as being a reflection of how everyone seems to be feeling at the moment. It's a far more pessimistic record than their previous works, but it still takes time to paint an optimistic picture of what may be on the horizon for the world, if we can work through our difficulties. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a fan of Cheap Trick? What's your favorite song? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Faxverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Faxverse as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Faxverse, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99.